So you've just gotten your very first pair of point shoes. You are so excited, but you come home and you realize you don't know how to sew. Let's talk. Grab a cup of tea or coffee and I will give you a beginner sewing lesson for how to sew your point shoes. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie here at Roche Ballet. We are a ballet school just for adults, helping grown-ups become the dancer of their dreams at any age. If you are an adult dancer and you are dreaming of your very first pair of point shoes, but you're not sure how to get there, go check out my Journey to Point program, which is designed to help passionate adult dancers just like you get ready for their first pair of point shoes. Today, I'm gonna to help you sew your point shoes, especially if you have never sewn before. I'm gonna teach you how to use your needle and thread, what to do with a thimble, how to stitch your shoes, and help you from beginning to end. First off, you're gonna to wanna to gather your supplies. So you'll need scissors, you'll need a needle and thread. I like to use a stitch kit. Uh, dancewear stores sell these, all the big brands sell them. You can also use a really thick needle and dental floss, but if you're new to this, I would recommend getting a stitch kit just because the needle that comes with it is already really great for sewing point shoes and it can be hard to pick from a wider range of needles. You may also want a thimble. Uh, a thimble is something that goes over your finger to help you push the needle so that you don't poke your finger because the needle can be very sharp and you can prick your finger. You may also want coffee, tea, snacks, or a movie because if this is your very first time sewing and your very first time getting point shoes, it can take you a few hours to sew your very first pair of point shoes. It will get quicker over time, but in the beginning, plan to set aside about four hours total to pin your elastics and ribbons and to sew them all on. And if you want something ballet related to binge while you sew your point shoes, check out my podcast. Season one is all about interviews with adult ballet dancers just like you, why they love ballet, how they got their start in ballet, any hardships they might've faced. And season two is all about ballet technique, training and philosophy. So you can really work on your ballet technique while you're sitting there sewing your point shoes. Go check it out. I'm gonna teach you how to do a really basic stitch inside of your point shoe. We're gonna go make a rectangle of stitches around the elastics and the ribbons. So you're gonna to wanna to already have placed your elastics and ribbons. You're gonna want them to already be safety pinned on so we can simply do the stitching. Within your stitch kit, you're gonna find a roll of really thick thread and one or two needles. When you're looking at your needle, you're going to see a vertical slit in the needle. That's called the eye of the needle. That's where we're gonna put the thread through to help us pull it through with the needle. So let's get our thread ready. I don't like to make anything longer than my arm because while I'm pulling the needle, it is gonna be difficult to pull if it's too long. So I like to keep the length of the thread about the length of my arm. So I've got my, my thread length. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And then what I'm going to do is thread this through my needle. I'm gonna start by holding the needle in my non-dominant hand. In my dominant hand, I'll hold the thread. From there, I'm going to hold this eye parallel to my eyes. So I'm not looking at the slit, but I'm looking at the side. Then I'm going to take the thread, hold it really close to the tip. So you have a really tiny piece you're working with. Put it right through that slot pull it through the other side, and leave yourself a little tail about that long. Pro tip, if the thread is frayed on the end and you can't fish it through, just lick it and it'll be a lot easier. Now we're gonna grab the point shoe. I personally like to sew the heel of the point shoe with the shoe flipped inside out. So I'm gonna flip the shoe inside out. I'm just gonna double check that my elastics are parallel with that back seam. Sometimes when you flip the shoe, it'll cause the elastic to get twisted. So just double check that it's parallel with that back seam. Now I'm gonna get to the actual sewing. So let's go for it. Basically what I'm going to do is make little stitches all the way around the edges of the elastic. I'm gonna only try to push my needle through this inner fabric. There are methods where you can push the needle all the way through the satin so it comes out the other side. I find that to be quite laborious for my fingers as this material can be really hard and it's hard to push through. So I like to go just on the edges of the elastics and the ribbons and just sew little stitches right along the edges. So I'm gonna grab my needle, make sure I have a good tail. You don't want the tail to be too short or else your, your thread is gonna come right out of your needle. 
threading the needle is kind of a pain, so you wanna avoid having to do it as much as possible. So I'm gonna take my shoe, I'm gonna start with the first elastic. I'm gonna start close to the drawstring casing, but don't sew through the drawstring casing because you might accidentally catch the drawstring with your needle and then it won't be able to slide if you want to adjust it. So I'm gonna start my stitches right here where the drawstring casing ends. There are many ways to tie this first little knot that get you started with your point shoes. I'm gonna show you the way that I think is the easiest. It's not necessarily the most secure, but you can go over it a bunch of times to make it get the job done, and it's really nice and easy, especially for your first time sewing. I'm gonna start by placing my needle through the fabric of the point shoe. I'm gonna go in and right back out, so I go through it a little bit. Then I'm gonna put my needle right on that elastic and push it through. This is where that thimble can come in handy if you're finding that it's too difficult to push that, that needle through the elastics. I'm gonna pull the thread all the way through, leaving just a little bit left. Now you see that little tail I have sticking out. I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna go again right next to that stitch. I'm gonna pull the needle all the way through and I'm gonna leave a small loop left over. Now from here, I am going to fish my needle through that loop and pull tight. Not quite all the way tight, just a little, a little tight. Then I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna put my needle through the loop. Make sure, oops, almost lost my tail. And then pull tight. I'm gonna do that several times. Now I've done that about eight times, eight or nine times, and now I'm gonna begin to sew small stitches around the edges of the elastic. So I'm gonna go through the material of the point shoe, not huge, just a little bit, right next to try to get underneath that elastic and go through the elastic. Be careful you don't poke your thumb right here. Very painful. So now I've sewn all the way down the side and I'm gonna sew across the bottom of the elastics. Now this area can be a little bit frayed, so I wanna make bigger stitches that go up a little bit further up into the elastic to really make sure that I don't catch the frayed part. If you catch the frayed part, the stitches pretty much just come out because the elastic is frayed. That little, those threads sticking out is called frayed. To push the needle through the fabric, hold the fabric with one hand, the non-dominant hand. Put the needle through the canvas into the elastic, hold it really tight with your fingers and push through. As you're going, you're gonna keep holding further and further on the tip. Once you get so far that you can't hold anymore, then switch your fingers to the needle and pull from the needle. Once you have the needle through the fabric, as you're pulling it out, make sure you don't just pull on the needle. Make sure you hold the tail with the main thread as you pull it out. If you only pull on the needle, what's gonna happen is that tail is gonna come right out and you're gonna have to re-thread it. So as you're pulling, make sure you hold really tight in your fingers to hold the threads together as you pull so that the tail will stay there as you go. And once you're starting to reach the end of your threads, you're holding really tight with your fingers so the tail doesn't go anywhere. Instead of having to pull your arm all the way, I like to use my fingers to pull the thread the rest of the way instead of having to take my arm so far away each time. These little changes in your sewing technique can make a big difference in the speed at which you sew. So you push the needle through until you can't hold it anymore. Then you pull from the other side then you hold the tail with your fingers. I like to hold with these. And then you use your pinky to pull the thread the rest of the way and a little rotation of the wrist, as opposed to going from here and then having to take your arm all the way out each time. As your thread gets shorter and shorter, make sure that as you're pulling the needle through that your tail is not longer than the thread itself. 
Right now, if I were to keep sewing, do you see how the tail is still hanging out? Now my tail is gonna get tucked in and I'm actually gonna be doubling my thread up and I'll be using too much thread. So make sure that you're always only sewing with one thread and your tail is always dangling. Now I'm just about at the end of my sewing. Again, I don't wanna sew through the drawstring casing, so I'm gonna tie it off right here. Now again, there's many ways to do this. I'm gonna show you what's the easiest. In this video, I'm assuming it's your first time sewing, so I don't wanna give you any crazy complicated knots. So we're gonna push the needle all the way through. I'm gonna keep a loop. Don't, don't pull it all the way through. Just pull enough so that the needle is passed and you still have a loop remaining. Now what I'm gonna do is take my needle underneath the thread. I like to go around two or three times. So I'm basically threading the needle through that loop. That was two times and then I pull it tight. Now I've created a knot right there. I'm gonna do that about five times. So I pull through, I go through the loop, again through the loop, and then pull tight. So I've done about five loops of that knotting action. I'm gonna then just test it and see how well I did. I'm gonna try to pull, I'm gonna try to tug. Now I know it feels like you just made this creation and how could you try to ruin it? I'm gonna try to pull and tug. But honestly, you would rather know if your stitches are gonna come undone now than in the middle of class. So give it a really good tug, pull, pull, pull on each side. If anything comes undone, simply just grab that needle and go more times around with that knotting action where you're looping through a couple of times and reinforce any areas that are gonna come unsewn. Usually the tips here are what'll come unsewn, so just do more loops around that tip if it comes unsewn. It's looking good, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the end of that thread off. Flip the shoe inside out, take off the safety pin, and there you have it. Once you finish that, you're gonna repeat that same procedure for every single piece of elastic and ribbon that you have on your shoes. Again, as a beginner sewer, this can be a very long process. Don't be discouraged. The very first time it takes a while, the second time takes a while, but over time you start to get more dexterous and nimble with your fingers and this process will speed up. One day you'll be able to do a full pair of point shoes in 30 minutes, maybe even less. Don't forget, if you want company while you sew your point shoes, I'll leave the link to my podcast right here. And until next time, happy dancing.